All right, good afternoon, everyone. Let's uh, just do a quick audio uh, slide check here. If you can hear me, you can see the slide up. Just let us know that everything is working good. Uh, if you just type a Y in that, yeah, that question box there. All right, looks good. Thank you. Thank you, George. Thank you, John. Um, all right, perfect. All right, looks good. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and roll. Uh, welcome, everyone, to this presentation hosted by FFR Trading. My name is John Madison. I'm the senior strategist here at FFR Trading, and I'll be your host for this special webinar, How to Uncover the Most Lucrative Option Trade Setups Utilizing Two Proven Setups. Uh, we're going to talk to Joe Duffy in just a moment. We did have some uh, technical difficulties early, so bear with us. Hopefully, we got it straightened out and we'll be able to go. Uh, normally, we like to use video, but uh, Joe, um, because of the technical issues, won't be able to uh, to use the video uh, portion here. But um, feel free to post uh, questions during the presentation, but we will have a formal Q&A session with Joe uh, after the presentation. Okay, you should see the risk disclosure slide here. Uh, I think you're all aware trading is risky business, right? That's why FFR exists, because most people fail trying to do this themselves, right? That's why we pair you up with proven traders who have proven track records, and we diversify you among them to help mitigate that risk and help you reach your financial goals. All right, here's the agenda for today's webinar. Uh, first, we'll review who we are here at FFR Trading and what our role is. I'll uh, introduce you to Joe Duffy. We'll take a look at the trade academics of the programs uh, that we've got for you today. We'll go over the performance results for both of the programs. Uh, Joe's going to review his strategies for successful trading during his portion of the uh, webinar. We'll have that Q&A with Joe, and then we'll take a look at the programs, all the educational material, uh, the signal service, everything that comes with those uh, programs. All right, first of all, who is FFR Trading and what is our role here? Well, we are a boutique vetting firm. We've been evaluating traders and their strategies for over 15 years to find veteran traders with proven track records. Each trader and strategy has to go through our eight-step certification process before that trader is allowed to provide their services to our clients here at FFR Trading. It's quite a thorough process, I think you'll agree. All right, let me go ahead and bring uh, Joe Duffy in. Um, I'm gonna unmute you, Joe. And a lot of you are familiar with, with Joe. Uh, some of you may have some of his uh, services or get his videos. Um, Joe is a 30-year market veteran, proprietary trader. He's traded for one of the top banks in the world. Um, was also a three-time top 10 finisher in the United States Trading Championships. That's a real money trading competition. Right? And I believe, Joe, that is how you kind of launched your career, was it not? Um, yeah, that's how I got started. That's how I got into the bank. And so, yeah, that was a long time ago, but, uh, yep, it, uh, that's how it all started. And anything else that, uh, you want to share with the folks, uh, you know, watching and listening here about your background, anything important that, uh, you want them to know? Mm, no, I just think, you know what, to be honest with you, John, I think the stuff that, uh, or the, the, what we did at the bank, Markets have evolved so much, and I think the biggest skill you have now is just trying to adapt with them uh, as markets change. And so it, that experience certainly helps. It helps you learn to adapt. But the exact things that I would be doing there, um, you know, those are passe now. You always have to be adaptive and, and um, you know, uh, learning new stuff. That's just the way the market is. Interesting. So while well, I've got you, before we get into uh, the programs, um, Joe's going to be taking us inside his premium option trading strategies, both key point and target zone uh, options programs. Um, Joe, what are we going to 
what are you going to get into uh, when you get into your portion of the uh, the webinar? What are we going to learn here? Well, I'm just going to try to take the recent trades that we've done and just go through a little bit of the reasoning for them. Um, I've got one proprietary tool that some of you may be familiar with if you know my stuff at all, and it's called Scoop, and it's a proprietary strategy. So I'm going to show it, uh, but you know, obviously you don't have access to that, but you have access to some of the other things. And sometimes I won't even use Scoop. I'll just use the other stuff. So there, there's things that hopefully uh, we're going to learn today um, and uh, that are applicable for your own trading, if you're doing your own or just, uh, you know, having a look at the process of, uh, of you know, how, how I do things, I guess, is, is what we're going to do. So we're going to use the actual most recent trades here and just look at the reasons why I took them. And, and that's what we're going to do. All right, fantastic. And um, obviously a lot has, since the last time we've had you on here, a lot has transpired in the financial markets, especially in the U.S. stock market here. Uh, we had a, uh, a crash, right, in, in uh, uh, 2022. I think we bottomed out around September of, of last year. And then the market went on a tear. Um, we've retraced more than 50% of that uh that that crash where, where are we headed what are you what are your thoughts mm. uh, on the markets at this point yeah I, I i'm not thinking new highs um i don't think the market's going to get into new highs it has the, the the strength of the market has definitely surprised me i think the last time we were on i was on with lee gaddis and and he had a little more bullish point of view and uh, he was right but again it that really is superfluous, I guess, to trading options because I, the big picture is not as important. Um, I, I really just try to to leave out the longer term uh, prognostications and um, try to find something in an uptrend and buy the dip or try to find something in a downtrend and, and sell the rally using some of the techniques that we're going to talk about today. So um, uh, certainly, um, there's so much going on in the market now, especially with options. And um, I can even touch on that a little bit uh, later on if anybody has any interest in it. But uh, options as a derivative of the stocks have now become almost a situation where the tail wags the dog. And um, because option uh, floor brokers always have to hedge their option positions, an option flow is becoming so large, like the nominal option flow is one and a half to two times bigger than the actual stock flow uh, on most days. So in other words, the nominal value of options traded is greater than the nominal value of, of the underlying stock. So if there's a bunch of call buying and the floor broker has to hedge that by, um, you know, because now he's short calls, he has to hedge that by buying stock, then it has an upward pressure on the market. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And that's why I said before, uh, there's a lot of stuff going on that was zero matter at all when I was working at the bank. And now it's probably one of the most important factors. But uh, what I've found eventually is instead of worrying too much about that is just to keep the strategies as they are and not worry so much why the market's going up or not worry so much what CPI is um, or what uh, all the numbers are because I did get, I have been a little bit bogged down in some of that because we haven't in the last 20 years worried what CPI is because it's always been a non-factor, right? So you start to watch inflation go up and you go, oh, geez, I don't want to buy stocks here, um, even though the setup may be bullish. And it took me, uh, I, I, I took a little bit of a, a break actually, um, and not because I was losing, but because I was just treading water. And uh uh, I think what going through my my trades and going through the charts and and looking at the trades I didn't take as much as the ones I did, uh, what I saw was just just take the damn trade um, and don't no, don't worry so much about the backdrop and um, and I hadn't had to worry about the backdrop for 20 years, so uh, it was new. And when it came out, it was like whoa, um, you know this is this can't be good. And uh, that means you hesitate to pull the trigger on long trades. But in retrospect, that was wrong. Um, but um, that's why I kind of stopped for a bit, just paused and 
just going back to doing what we've been doing before it has worked a lot better. You know, not being afraid of inflation or not being afraid of what numbers coming out next week um, has been a much better strategy uh, for me than worrying about trying to stay ahead of the CPI. You, you talked a little bit about, you know, the way things used to be. If you could go back and, and talk to your younger self about trading, what, what, what would you say? What advice would you give yourself? Oh, for sure. The number one thing to be successful is patience. Uh, and that's why I didn't mind taking, like, uh, just saying, okay, I'm not, not going to trade. I'm not going to dig myself a hole. I'm not going to make any money. I'm just not going to trade until I can run through my uh, my trades, run through the trades I didn't take, like I said, and figure out what um, what I should be doing. But yeah, even during the day, like I trade uh, futures during the day, and um, I know that uh, I may sit here for two or three or four hours waiting for something to set up, and the job is not to try to find a trade the job is to try to make the trade find you or you have to do it um, so patience would be the number one thing without a doubt absolutely without a doubt and anything um you know what what tip what key tip would you give to your you know to the audience here uh yeah yeah i would just say that that's it like just if you have some methodology that that you like um you know, the job is not to trade every day or to find every setup. It, the job is just to try to make some money. And if you've only found a setup that, you know, it may be days or weeks between setups, then just be patient and wait for it. Um, because you'll make, if, if you're confident in that one setup you have, even if it's not frequent, just just be patient. And it's, uh, honest to God, that's there's no greater quality in this job uh, than patience. Very, very interesting. So, um, Joe, we're going to start going through uh, your two programs here. You've got Target Zone Options and Key Point Trader, two different uh, programs, even though you trade options on both. So let's start to go through these. Um, and, uh, you know, I may ask you some questions as we go through to, to uh, bring out some other points here. But your Target Zone Option program, you're trading mainly spreads. Um, Talk yeah, about and the, and what, what spreads like are, are you using in this market? Okay. Um, well, target zone trade spreads, and mostly for, if you're not that familiar with a spread, it's kind of like a covered right where you own the stock and, and sell a call against it. But in a spread, um, and there are different types of spreads, but basically you own one option and then sell another one against it. So it's, it's very much like a covered right if you're familiar with that from the stock market. Um, but... Um, I'll use different types of spreads um, depending on really um, it's almost like shopping uh, grocery shopping you you kind of looking for the best deal and some spreads set up a little bit more favorably to what I think is going to happen than other ones so um, I can use a call spread to be bullish but I could also be short the puts and use a spread like that uh, to be bullish so uh, there are various ways you can do it and um, it really just depends on what looks like the best deal to me at the time. Um, and the other thing that spreads the, the big advantage, I guess, is that because you're long something and short something at the same time, uh, you are in a way hedged. So if the you're not you're not 100% hedged, but you are what you've done is sort of uh, mute the volatility a little bit. So if you're bullish and um, you know you're long a uh, an option, a call option that's two months out and you're short a call option um, at a higher strike um, that's only one month, I would say, in uh, the market goes up, which is what you want it to do. Um, the long-term options is going to go up at a faster rate than the short-term option, but the short-term option is going to rise too, right? So uh, all you're trying to do is make more money than you lose um, on the long option versus the short option. <laughs> And I know you'll you'll get into uh, more of the specific strategy when you get into your to sort here. of um, you know take some of the volatility out. And you're I'm looking sorry? at uh, so you're looking at the top 100 most liquid stocks ETFs as well, right? Yeah, I try to I track probably about 100 odd stocks that I'll look through. Um, you know, there's there's thousands of optional stocks, so you can't really um, 
you can't really manually look through them all. And uh, although I do have some computer screens I run, I like to look at them manually um, and, um, you know, get a look and, and look what some of the, uh, the the actual chart actually looks like. All right. And, and Target Zone trades on average about four to six times per month. And obviously that can vary depending on market conditions and uh, what trades you're in and so on. Yep. Yep. Uh, you recommend a minimum account size of $10,000. And you're allocating 10%, roughly, we'll say 10% per trade alert on the overall account size, correct? Um, yeah, that's up to the individual, but yeah, um, that's yep. generally, I guess. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at the performance of Target Zone. Now, again, this is based on a $10,000 account size. All right, again, that's the minimum account size uh, suggested. Allocating, in this case, approximately $1,000 per trade. This is, again, non-compounded numbers here. These numbers uh, were starting here from January of 2017 through July 10th of this year. All right, so we've got a lot of data here. In that time, that $10,000, right, there's a return on capital here of over 1,000%. And that's an annual, uh, average annual return of 166%. Now, guys, just think about, you know, if you've got an IRA sitting there and you're getting, you know, 3 or 4% on that, what would this do for your IRA or for your retirement? Um, a lot of people like to look at the, the monthly average if they're trying to generate monthly income. Uh, you're averaging, Joe, over that period, uh, over $1,300 a month uh, in profit, uh, which is phenomenal. Uh, you're winning 73% of the trade, so you've got a very high win percentage, especially over that long period of time here. Um, and another bonus here is the average winner is $683, your average loss just $436. So not only do you have a high win percentage, but you also have on average larger wins than your losses. Um, how do you, you know, talk about how do you, uh, how do you achieve that? Mm, well, um, I guess you pick good trades. <laughs> um, so is it is it a function is it a function of the uh, you know like you said picking the trade or is it the risk management aspect a combination of that or um, yeah do you know what um, it evolves John honestly sometimes um, trading is always evolving and um, actually things I've done more recently um, just from as I said I took a little pause and looked at everything was. To shorten my duration a little bit, uh, last year's what I've gone is I a very long-term option position, and then continually rode against it. Um, and uh, I I picked up premium pretty much a week uh, doing it like that. Um, and recently, I've shortened my duration a little bit. I've become a little bit more directional, and I think in a little bit less. Uh, um, oriented toward just uh, uh, premium erosion for me, although I still do some of that. Um, I th I think the trades that we've seen recently kind of were the results came faster. There weren't as many legs. Like I didn't own a an option six months out and and rode against it, you know, uh, ten or fifteen times. Um, now I've just got an option that may expire in a week or two, and I've taken a directional um, bet you know, via a spread on which way that market's going to go. And um, so the strategies are always uh, evolving a little bit. And I can, not to say I only use one to the exclusion of the other, um, but uh, um, the strategy where I was long an option that was six months out and and selling against it. Um, it wasn't serving me as well as it did the first few years. So you have to adjust and uh, and, and try something else. So and, uh, and that's kind of a, a, a theme you've, you've brought up over and over again that uh, you really had to adapt over the years. Uh, it, you know, trading is not just a you static. Do. You absolutely have never. to adapt. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Here's, uh, it's always changing. It's It's... So, yeah, so and you can kind of see in that graph where, where I where I took some time to myself there near the end. Yeah, so this is it just know, doesn't do anything. The equity curve for target zone 
and you know right. you're always going to have you know uh, a good strategy you know uh makes new equity highs you know you have some slow periods here uh maybe some drawdowns some flat periods right but you go on to new equity highs that's that's a hallmark of a good strategy um and this obviously over the years has done done very well uh, but that's what you want to see in your equity curve um now your key point options is it's a different program and here you're just trading puts and calls uh you're not use, utilizing spreads um and so talk a little bit about that's correct yeah and i'll i'll try it sure yeah in, in this one like i said it just puts and calls so um you wouldn't be trading you know netflix here or tesla because the puts and calls are just outrageously priced um but you could trade them in target zone because you're spread so the difference between the two of them is your actual cost um, between your long trade and your short trade is your actual cost but uh, when you're just having a long trade whether it be a long put or a long call um, you can't have um, really crazy expensive options so um, i have a, a smaller subset of stocks i like to trade here that generally don't have crazy option premiums um, las vegas sands is one uh, jp morgan uh, paypal uh, starbucks um, DraftKings, um, a, a lot of stocks like that um, um, that still move, but they're not crazy, crazy wild movers like Tesla or, or Google. Um, and you can actually afford to trade the options uh, just because they're priced reasonably. Right, which is certainly a bonus for yeah. uh, your subscribers. Um, now, this particular strategy it says you're looking for pullbacks in an established trend and you're looking for uh some type of entry uh, uh to establish a position right and both of them are the same in that regard mm -hmm. uh, just uh you can do different types of things uh the the target zone has probably a little bit more flexibility to it um because you can always rearrange the spread and um it's it's never over till it's over in the in the target zone if you want to rearrange your spreads. Uh, but in the key point, it's kind of like, okay, if it's wrong, you just have to, you can't rearrange it or you can't sell something against it. You just kind of have to say, okay, I'm going to get out of this. And so from that respect, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then this program, it's again, tra trading an average of three to four trades per month, again, depending on market conditions, what's going on. Uh, same uh, recommendation in terms of account size minimum, $10,000 there. Uh, in this case, you're allocating about $750 uh, per option position, or seven seven and a half percent of the overall account size. Uh, is that is that? Uh, yeah, that's fine. As far as yeah, the guidelines it's, go. Um, yeah, these ones, uh, they both can listen. It's an option position, so your risk is whatever you put in. Uh, but because you're not hedged, as you are in target zone. Um, these can be a bit more uh, volatile in terms of uh, the returns and the volatility cuts both ways, right? And you can also make a lot more money if you don't have a hedge on uh, than if you do. Right. So let's take a look at the uh, the performance of the key point trader program. Again, this is based on a $10,000 account size and allocating approximately $750 per trade here. Again, non-compounded. Uh, these numbers as well go back from January of 2017 through um, June uh, 30th of 2023 here. And during that period, that 10,000, uh, the return on capital of over, again, over 1,000%, 1,084%. That's a net profit of $108,360. And uh, that's an average annual return of 167%. Uh, again, this one also, the monthly average, uh, returns better almost fourteen hundred dollars a month in uh in profit on average uh, this one wins about 67 percent of the time so maybe just a little lower than um your target zone but the average win here is 590 dollars with the average loser is just 290 dollars so you got nearly a 10 to uh sorry two to one uh between your average win and your average loser there and you know are still a very you know uh respectable win win rate um, so again this is just something that uh, with straight puts and calls uh, you're not hedging anything here uh, you're looking for a pullback in a trend and you're establishing and then you'll probably talk more about how you uh, to get into these positions 
and uh, some of the actual trades from these services. Uh, so we'll get ready. Uh, Joe, anything else you want to add about uh, key point there before we uh, turn over to you? Um, no, I think we'll probably cover it as we go. If there's anything to be added, and certainly you can ask a question and we'll, we'll answer anything at the end. All right, perfect. So I'm going to get ready to switch over to you, Joe, let you get your chart set up there. Uh, once Joe is done, uh, we'll come back. We'll have that Q&A session, and uh, then we'll cover everything that comes with the, uh, Joe's premium programs, uh, Key Point and uh, Target Zone, and uh, the signal services, the educational material, all the support that comes with these, uh, with these programs. So I'm Joe, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it over to you here, and you should get a little... Uh, pop up on your end here. Okay. Yep. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, thanks for coming, guys. I apologize again that there's no, um, um, you know, video in the corner. Uh, we had all sorts of messy technical problems here, and I had to switch from my laptop uh, with the camera to the desktop. So, um, that's why. Okay. So, as I was doing that, I'm really um, most of the time I'm out living this anyway because I I know what I've done and I'm just going to go through it. But I really haven't had a chance to look at anything hardly. So um, you're going to see um, basically me remembering it and thinking through it um, in real time here. Okay, so this is um, this is like. Uh, Almost a weekly chart. Each of these bars is four days. Um, four days. There's no magic, but I let, for some reason I've always liked my charts. If I have time, if I mean a chart, the next one I do an hourly because it's so. Uh, A daily chart, then this one I love for. When I like four hours. Hey, Joe, I, I apologize to, to, to break so, in. Uh, uh, that's the chart. You, your sound was kind of in and out there. Again, as I said before, come to River Pass. Uh, guys, sorry uh, about, like I said, we were having these technical issues uh, before we started. It seemed to get resolved, and it looks like the uh, audio is cut out again. So I'll give Joe a moment to see if he can uh, get back uh, logged in and uh, get the audio going again here. what I was talking about was that what I've learned over the last year and some of it was by trying to learn more uh, more things is um, just stick with what you were already doing okay it, it doesn't really matter why the market's moving as uh, as much as it is it's moving and that's really all that we need to know so um, like I'll admit that, or not even admit, I mean, it's human nature. Uh, you go 20 odd years not worrying about uh, inflation numbers or anything else. And, um, you know, now all of a sudden it's it's rampant and you spend a year where the market's uh, getting, getting beat up a little bit because of it. And uh, um, you, uh, you, you know, you're going to get uh, a little bit preoccupied with that. But what I learned was don't be. All right. Don't be preoccupied with it. Just stick to what you were already doing. Okay. So this is a trade we did recently. Uh, again, uh, we bought the trade. This was a trade that we did we bought way down here. Okay. So, um, but this is a big picture, right? Because I want I want to know what the big picture is. John already mentioned that um, that uh, basically we're looking for pullbacks and an uptrend. So if I have the big picture, I know that I'm in a in an uptrend here. We can 
you know, basically this chart goes from the bottom left to the screen to the top right. Okay, and the retracement um, has been, it's taken a fair amount of time. The top was back in uh, late last year in November, right? So uh, the beginning of July or the end of June here, that's a fair amount of correction that we've had um, to, you know, rest from this long run that we've had. So I'm starting to get interested. I'm starting to get interested because this is a correction largely in time. Um, it's corrected some price, but it hasn't really um, pulled back a long way, but it has taken a lot of time. So what is that time given? It, it's, this whole thing is, this whole principle that, I'm, that we're dealing with here is like, it, the great analogy that I've used is, if it's like shooting a cannonball out of a cannon. Um, the maximum momentum of the cannonball um, may be back here someplace, but the cannonball is going to stay in the air for a very much longer time after it reaches its peak uh, momentum. So, and that's what we're dealing with here. So uh, we've got a whole bunch of momentum up. Uh, it's going to be really hard to break that momentum. And, and when you have pullbacks like this that are basically functions more of time than price, um, I'm always looking for, for places to, um, you know, to buy here. So um, I, this is a simple 10 period RSI. This is my favorite uh, RSI period. I don't know why. I guess experience has taught me I just like it. Um, and there's a couple of things I do here. Um, I like to see RSI at the lowest level it's been in quite some time, right? So, uh, you know, back here in the beginning of July, RSI had not been this low since um, the previous July right back here okay so i've got a yearly low in rsi coming right here so that's attractive to me from a long point point of view it tells me that the market's pulled back you know if i go down to a smaller time frame um here's where we got long right back here if you can see where my my uh, crosshairs and my little hand cursor is there um 10 period rsi got down to 25. my parameters on 10 period rsi are 75 and 25. And especially on on pullbacks in a in a bull trend, um, I find that anything 25 or below is uh, is a place where I'm interested. Now you can't necessarily just buy every pullback to 25, but when it when it comes back into that area, I'm starting to get interested in 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 the stock, right? So that's what it did here. Now we can look at the few, previous few times it's been down in this area. Here's one 25 right here. So you can see on this time, it went, price went a little lower, although RSI moved a little higher. I, I would have been looking back here still to buy because it had, it had made that low and this sort of creep down doesn't, wouldn't bother me. Okay, but it, the point is it's in that area. You can see right here again, it was the exact low. You can see right here again, um, it was pretty much the exact low, okay? Now I'm going to just deviate just a little bit, just for instructional purposes here, and say one of the other things I'll do um, is not use fixed parameters. I'm going to go look at where RSI has in the past um, been significant. Okay, so if I'm looking at the tops here, I've got a I've got about 85 here, where where when RSI is above 85. It doesn't stay there very long. So how do I use that information? Two ways. RSI above 85 early in the trend, like right here where follow my cursor back here. We got really high. We got up to 87 or so or 88 here. When it's early in the trend, a RSI reading that high tells you that more is likely to come. Remember that cannonball analogy? Well, this has been shot out of the cannon with a lot of velocity to, to get RSI to 88, okay? So when you see that early off a low, you can look to be buying pullbacks, which clearly was a great strategy, okay? Now, if you're more mature in a trend, like say you are back right here, at that point, I'm definitely looking to take profits. So right up here, I'd be looking to take profits in this stock. Now, was it the exact high? No, but it spent about two months trading on either side of that level. So is it a good place to take profits? Yeah, probably, well, for sure it was, right? Um, and uh, if we go way back here, okay, I don't have, yeah, I do have, uh, again, um, 
this one, I think you could argue, was uh, uh, not a great signal because I think that that much momentum coming off this low should have given you more uh, upside momentum than it did. But my point here is, is using RSI uh, is early in the trend, uh, coming off a high or a low, really um, high momentum readings or higher RSI readings are good indications that more of that trend is to follow. And later in the trend, they're good indications that uh, it's a good place to lighten your to lighten your position um, into uh, while it's going your way into strength if you're long. Okay, but generally in an uptrend or bullish, whenever RSI gets 10 period RSI gets down to 25, I'm interested in in uh, looking at, at the long side. So that's one of the reasons I was interested in Oxy down here. Okay. Uh, an, another reason is, uh, and I'll show this, we're going to go through the same things, basically some of the same things, just with different uh, different markets. So one of the things I like to look at is where has the market been? Uh, markets have a memory. So I want to know where has the market been uh, found highs and lows in the past? Now, uh, let me see here. I'm going to do... I got a high right here on Oxy. Okay, follow me. I'm starting at this high right here. I've got some some congestion right here. I got some lows, some lows, some lows, and then it breaks. It comes up and tests it as a high. So this is an important level for me. So if Oxy would have ever gets back here in the future, I'm going to look at all the uh, the times that it's been an important level, and I'm going to see if I wanted to take action around that level. Okay. Now, if we look at the, the the last low here, you can see that there was a lot of action right around this level. Uh, it, it supported this market so many times, so many times. All right. So, do I really think with RSI down at 25 and it's down at a yearly low, and it's running into the times where the market's been so supported that it's going to run through very far? It may run through and grab a little liquidity. Um, but uh, I did not think it would run through very far. And um, we actually bought long right at the open of this bar here, right here. So it was actually, this trade was never ever offside even for a second. Uh, we got into um, the options um, like at the open and uh, it, all it ever did was, was go straight up. Okay. Um, I said one of the other things that I used was proprietary. And uh, it's a scoop indicator, and I'm sure you guys have seen it before. Um, it, 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 at least on that time frame. Let me look and see if there was a longer time frame it was showing me anything. Um, okay, on a longer time frame, here's how we use scoop. Well, we use it the same on any time frame. If the histogram, which is the green part, is above zero, what I'm looking for is scoop to come down and sort of turn up while the histogram stays positive. Okay, so I'd be looking for a buy in here. Remember, this is a very long-term chart now, so uh, this little buy here, this bar is a couple of weeks long, and it moved from 56 up to you know 66, so that's that's a pretty big signal. So I clearly had uh, some signals right here at the low on the very long-term chart, and that was another reason I liked it, okay? You know, start off with a, just a nice uptrend, have a nice orderly pullback, uh, RSI gets oversold, uh, scoops on a buy signal. Um, those are the things I look for, okay? And also the price level, right? Uh, where Price has a memory, and have we reacted around this price a lot in the past, and we had. So that was the buy signal there, okay? And it went, like I said, uh, if, we go to a, if we go to a daily chart, um, you can see we bought the low here, uh, or bought the open here, which was about $56 a change. And, you know, a few days later, um, it was 59 and a half which is plenty, and um, it was about where we got out of that. It pulled back, and then it went up again, but I'd made my money here uh, over those few days, so that was plenty. And Occidental Petroleum options aren't that expensive. They don't have a huge time value in them, so that was a really, that was like a double there in a few days. Okay, uh, let's look at another trade that we did. Um, JP Morgan. Oh, sorry, guys, I've got to get my... Okay. 
Okay, JP Morgan, where are you? JP Morgan, I've had a lot of success with this stock as well. Um, very similar here, okay? This is a daily chart. So what have I got here? What did I remember I said? The histogram is above zero. Um, scoop is, is in a position where it's a bit oversold. I'm interested. But also, what have I got? I've got a low made in the bottom left of my chart, and I've got a high uh, made in the top right of my chart. Now, I thought that this line here, that all these highs here, listen, that they're eventually going to be broken. Yes, it had turned it back a lot of times, but um, every time it turns it back, it gathers energy. And you can see that, that it wasn't really turning it back very far the last time. So again, we bought that morning right here on uh, JP Morgan. And, uh, you know, that level was about 140 and change. And, and like literally uh, two days later, it was 147 and change. So that was a big, uh, a big move. Now, didn't participate at all in any of this here uh, because I'd already had, I'd already made that money. So um, the further it goes away from what you think is support, the, um, the more risky um, it becomes. Um, okay, let me just go through here too. And this, I want, this is an important concept, even though I don't do the trades, okay? Where would I put my line here for support or for interest, not even support? So I'm going to go back to this low here, okay, and the look. Oh, and then I see, oh, there's a low pretty close here. Oh, there's a high pretty close here. Uh, nothing through here. Um, eh, a little consolidation here, but the lows are here. And we've got some lows with a little bit of uh, um, run through here. So this level was pretty important. Now, the market never got anywhere close to it again, but I we continue to watch this level here uh, as an area of importance. Okay. Uh, similarly, if I move this line up here, because we know those highs are important, right? Look, we've got this low here. We've got this high here. We've got highs, 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 highs. This is going to be an important support if we test it. Like we tested it in a minor way right here and held it and it's gone. If in the future this 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 area here becomes tested again, it, it's it's going to be a good chance that it that it's tested as support. Because why? Well, again, how has the market reacted to this level in the past? It's often left, you know, wicks. Uh, when I say wicks, I mean candles that wick down and then come back up. All right, so it, it's been an important a level of support and resistance in the past. Market remembers that, so I would continue to watch uh, for something like that. So that, that's also a reason why um, I look to um, why I look to J.P. Morgan because yes, I knew this was going to be resistance, but you can't keep beating your head on this level for too long before it's going to go through. Uh, was my thought, especially when Scoop was in a position uh, that it was here, uh, like this. Okay, um, let's do another one. Uh, advanced micro devices. Um, this was a stock. Uh, we got long the stock right. I think we got long the stock right on. I can't remember whether it was this day, this red candle day, or the day before, but it was right around in here. As you can see, Scoop is in a good position. Again, I've got a chart that's basically going bottom left to top right. It's had a pretty good pullback. Um, let me see where my RSI was, uh, my 10 period RSI. Okay, it had, it wasn't all the way down to 25, but it's coming off an area where it, it was. Um, and if I looked, I'm going to bet you, if I looked at a half a day chart, I'm probably going to get pretty close. Yeah, if I looked at a half day chart, here I am here, this is where I bought it. Um, I might have bought it this day, I can't remember. One of these two days I bought it. Uh, you can see that. Um, RSI got down to where I like it to be, and it actually had a divergence. And when I mean divergence, I mean this this bottom in the RSI was was higher than this one, um, even though price wasn't. So it it then had a pretty good run, and um, uh, or do you know what? Or was it there? I bought it or there? I can't remember whether it might have been here. Actually, my mistake. I just got uh, yeah, it was actually in June or the end of June. So yeah, we bought it here. My mistake and. Um, I think I bought it near the bottom of this red day, and then it it um, it, it danced around for a couple of days, and and, and that and then it rallied. So this doesn't maybe look like much, but you know it's a move from 109, you know to 116. 
um, you know, that's plenty. You, you don't need to, you know, I'm just looking to get in and get out. And um, if something shows me that it's, it's uh, a profit, then, um, you know, options are a dep uh, depreciating investment. Um, every day that you hold them, they lose a little bit of value, time value. So I like to get in and get out and, uh, and move on to the next opportunity. Um, so in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, support and resistance, let's see what I had here coming around this lines here. So I got this old high back here. And as you can see, this old high back here got remembered as support uh, back here, okay? And that happens a lot of times. Now, it's better if there's more, if there's more occurrences of it. Um, but uh, in fact, you know what? Look, look at this here. Okay, I've got all these lows here. I've got this high here, high here, high here, high here. This is going to be an actually better support. So if you're watching advanced micro devices, it closed at 110. I'd be looking around that 100 level uh, or low 100, 101 or so. I'd be looking here for some support. If I'm not saying we're going to get there. I'm just saying that in my view, uh, this will be one to watch because look where our SI is. It's coming down. It's coming down into this area where we know that the market has turned a lot of times in the past, right? So if it comes down here, uh, I think there's a good chance that it's gonna try to find some support for a balance. That's just around 101. So that's something for the future, not something that we've already done, but it shows you how I find these things um, sort of as we go. Now, let me look and see what Scoop's doing here. I always like to see what it's doing. All right, so let me go to a longer time frame. Okay, so I can see that Scoop may be in a good position if, if, if AMD got to 101. Look, the histogram is very likely to still be very green above zero, and this is going to come down, and uh, it already is coming down. But if this, if this stock drops down to 101 or 100 or somewhere in there, I think it's going to be a pretty good setup. So um, that's a trade we may well do. So you, you're kind of – I'm going through the analysis with you in, in, in real time here. Um, let's look at one here that was working out and what we did with it. So this was, this was LVS. Um, we bought LVS, I think right here, right? Um, sorry, let me go back to a daily chart. I think that's a little bit too blown up here. We bought LVS, I think right around here, right in this area right here. And it it, it danced around doing nothing for a couple of days. Uh, so it was around 57-ish. It got up to, uh, um, you know, 60-ish. Uh, and, uh, and then we had what happened was on this – very nasty bar right here. Um, one of the brokerage companies, I'm trying to think who it was, lowered their earnings outlook and boom, the stock got flushed a little bit. So what I did was when it came back up right around here, I got out. Now, uh, I, I took a small loss on it because I lost you know, all the time value that I'd been holding it for, but um, I thought it was better to do that than, than um, you know, then just take a reasonable loss and, and, and try to get out. Now, obviously it went up and I would have made money, but yeah, you obviously you can never know that um, either. So just pointing out that, yeah, this stock closes one day at 58 and change and it's looking really nice for you. And the next day, you know, or two days later, it's, it's 54. So um, those kind of things can happen and, and did happen here. And I think it was Jeffries, it was the brokerage that lowered their, their earnings estimates here on uh, Las Vegas Sand. So um, this, was a, this was the right idea. Uh, like if you just take this anomaly out, you can see that there were buyers here for this, for this stock. Um, and Jeffries really just interrupted that buying. And had it continued we, for another day or two, I would have taken a profit there for sure. Um, let's see, uh, Johnson & Johnson. 
Okay, uh, Johnson and Johnson. So yeah, so Johnson and Johnson right down in here was where I bought it. Um, now, I, as I said, I'm running through this with you guys in real time. So I'm actually looking at the reasons or for the reasons why I would have been interested in Johnson and Johnson down there. Um, what do we have here for for support? Um, yeah. Okay, I don't really see a lot in terms of actual support resistance because I was interested in it right right here. Um, so let me look at some other things. Let me look and see what my RSI was doing here. Okay, RSI had gotten itself into a nice area, all right, uh, for sure. Um, Johnson & Johnson had made, RSI was quite oversold, like below 25 on the daily, and it had not made a lower low uh, price, okay? Um, you know, there, there was probably a reason, maybe on a shorter term chart that I was quite interested in this stock. Um, you know, if you look on a shorter term basis, here's, yeah, if you look on an hourly chart, you'll see, I think, a little bit more. Um, yeah, so I was interested in this stock. Let me just go here. Yeah, this, this, this area right here, um, you can see where we, is very significant. We, we tried to bottom here, top, 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 and eventually it try, it breaks out, and now it tests it as support. So this is an exactly the same setup that I just mentioned to you guys in AMD, and I'd be watching around 100. It's exactly what happened in, in Johnson & Johnson, except on a smaller scale. Okay, so I've got RSI divergence at a fairly low level. I've got a higher um, low in Johnson & Johnson. And I think my general feeling at the time was that the market was going to rally. And um, the options here are cheap. Uh, it's a Dow stock. It's probably going to rally with the market. Um, and and that's why I bought it. Okay, um, let's go one that uh, the jury's still out on here, uh, which is uh, Datadog. Okay, uh, I went with Datadog, thinking that these this level here was going to be important. Top, top, you know, a top, and then a gap through, bottom test, bottom test. Top test. I'm thinking that this level is going to be important. Now, I was a little early here. I, you can, I can change my line a little bit. Uh, I was a little early here on Datadog. Um, it's just about the level I got in at today. Uh, but um, you know, jury's still out. We're going to see what happens tomorrow, I guess, uh, on this stock. But that's one of the reasons I was uh, negative on Datadog. Uh, just because it, uh, you know, again, basically my chart moved from top left to bottom right. And it's now retraced. So I'm looking for retracements in the larger downtrend that run into areas where the market is showing um, a reluctance to trade through, right? So that was one of the reasons I got short there. You can see um, RSI is at a pretty high level. Uh, have a look and see what Scoop's doing. Okay, on, on let's look at a little bit longer term. Yeah, you can see in a little bit longer term that the histogram's negative, and Scoop's trying to turn over here on um, on that term and right at that resistance. So I was a little anxious on the button here. I probably could have waited till yesterday, uh, but I was too early on it. Um, but I guess if I look back at the charts uh, that were intraday, um, you know, a few days ago, then I obviously had a reason why I thought it wasn't going to go much higher. Um, but uh, Looks like may have just been a little bit early uh, because it is doing on this chart exactly what it should be doing, which is running into that line and then pulling back uh, because you've got a negative setup in the scoop here as well. And you've got, uh, let me see where your RSI is. Yeah, you, you, like your RSI is getting up here to levels where um, it peaks my interest whenever it's at 75 or 25. Uh, my interest is peaked in 10, to, 10 period RSI. Okay, so. <sighs> As I said, it's not uh, always, uh, this is what I've done for a very long time. Basically, I traded like this. And uh, 
when I had my little uh, pause because I got so overwhelmed, I guess, with uh, trying to learn so many new things that what I finally figured out was, listen, if, if you just did the trades you were supposed to do, um, you would have been far better off um, because certainly there were lots of trades um, uh, you know, going up here. This was probably a good trade uh, back down here, but I found it very difficult, to be honest, to be awaiting CPI, to be awaiting the Fed minutes, and and being long. Um, that I know now was a mistake. Um, don't worry about that stuff. The market um, may have short-term fluctuations around it, but um, it's going to do what it's going to do. And if you, the, the tried and true methods that I'd used for a long time still worked, I just got scared to use them um, because the the macro environment was different than I'd seen in a very long time. And like I'm human too. Um, I'm trying not to lose money more than I'm trying to make it. Um, and I got a little bit too cautious and a little bit too overwhelmed by by some of the uh, by some of the macro that we were seeing. So. And I don't regret anything I did um, in terms of just standing back. Um, you know, I'm not here to tread water or to break even. So um, if I needed to reevaluate, you know, when you're breaking even or you're treading water, is a good time to do it, not when you're getting killed. So, um, yeah, I went back and I looked through the trades I did. I looked through the trades that I should have did. Uh, and uh, what I found was just do the same things you've always been doing and um, you're going to get pretty close to the same results. So, uh, and what I do is basically at least some of what I've showed you today. Um, you know, I use some, um, let me see if I can even throw up a chart here and we'll, we'll knock some off. Okay. This is the last thing I'm going to show you guys today. I'm just going to take all this stuff off because it doesn't matter. This is just RSI and scoop and stuff. So what I've got left with here is just uh, trading bands. Um, sometimes I don't like to watch trading bands on my chart because the 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 market really doesn't care too much about being contained by these bands, right? It, it, they shouldn't be viewed as something that's going to contain price. They should be viewed as something that tells you how much momentum price has. So when it's getting outside these bands, it has a lot of momentum. Um, if it's early, it's bullish, just like RSI. But if it's late, after a long rally or a long decline, and it's getting near the top of these channels, then then I'm it's it's too late to participate in this direction. So, like right here, the market's taking off off this low, getting outside this these bands or getting into this blue section is bullish. Okay, and I'll tell you what these bands are in a sec, exactly how to set them up on your chart. Okay, but if early on, just like a high RSI reading, it's bullish. But once you've been going for a while, I have a lot of caution when the market gets up here um, at the top of those bands. It's no time to be trying to trade along uh, when it's that far stretched. So uh, basically, um, this purple one here is just a 20 period Bollinger Band uh, with a two standard deviation. Okay, um, And the ones that I've colored here, uh, these are called Keltner channels. Almost any software has both of these. And the Keltner channel is a 20 period moving average again with a two times average true range added to the average and a three times average true range added to the average. And that usually this blue band here is, you know, you're getting into some more extreme readings. Like you can see here, market reverses, here it reverses, here it reverses, uh, here it reverses. Um, you know, but it rarely gets into that rarefied sort of uh, air. So when it does, and it's early in the move, tells you the move's probably got further to go. When it's late in the move, it tells you the market's really getting a little bit too stretched. And sure, it could go higher, but you don't want to participate on the long side. Just get out uh, if you're long. Okay, so those are the, some some of the techniques that I use. Um, Everything but scoop you can find anywhere on um, any technical analysis software, and um, yeah, including 
here, just the, the lines are, are, are great. Um, just look for previous pivots and, and put them in. And then when the market gets to them in the future, um, then you go down to your other types of analysis and decide you want to move. Do you want to take its position? Uh, because it, the price is in an area where it's likely to uh, reverse or um, where it's likely to reverse almost always. I showed you that one example of uh, JP, JP Morgan where I thought the price was going to you know, bounce through, but I had good reason for that. But generally, it's an area where the market is going to respect. Okay, so if you learn to draw that line, if that's all you learn today, is look where look look left to trade right, look left and see where all the previous pivots have been, and if they start to line up, you know that's going to be an area of of interest in the future. All right, so that's it, guys. That's uh, some of what we do, uh, for sure. Uh, not all of it. I can't obviously show you all of it um, because there's just no time. And the scoop is a large part of it, and it's uh, you know it's proprietary. So again, scoop is just listen. If the histogram is above zero, and it's turning up below zero, do you want to buy? And similarly, you'd want to sell here. You'd want to sell here. Um, you know, and, and, and uh, sells back all through here, um, you know, like that. So um, yeah. And other than that, the biggest thing that I said earlier that I was talking to John is. Uh, and I think my greatest quality has become is, uh, you know, is patience. Just be patient and um, wait for the market to make you make a trade. Don't try to make a trade uh, in the market. Okay, if there's any questions, let me see if I've got my, uh, if there's any questions yet. I don't see a question. Maybe, maybe John, if you have a question. Um, yeah, I'll go through these, uh, Joe. Great stuff. Uh, thank you. You sh shared a lot of actionable stuff here um with the indicators but also with you know some specific trade setups that you got uh your your stocking uh anyway so uh m and some others did have uh questions if you could just repeat uh joe maybe the uh settings for your rsi there yep um the rsi is a 10 period rsi and whether i'm looking at hourly charts or daily charts um i'll use 10 periods and my parameters are 25 and 75 um, but I also use RSI just by looking at areas where RSI has reached even more extreme. So like on this chart here, kind of around the 87 area um, is an area where I'm interested. So anytime this has got to 87, let me just let me just put a line in here and I'll show you exactly what I mean here. You can see that around 87, the market has, you know, our size at least turned away. So right here, um, right here, um, right here, our size turned down. It doesn't mean it's always the top, okay? It just means it's an area where I'm interested in seeing what's going to happen. And okay, look at here's again. It's at 87 right now on, on Datadog. This is Datadog we have up there. So listen, we've drawn this line in here where we've had all our relatively highs and lows before and i told it's an area of interest i've also drawn this line in here on rsi where it's all it's it's turned a lot of times and they're and they're both coming in at the same time so things like that you love to see okay and again this is something i um that, that we're it's happening in real time before your eyes is what i'm trying to say uh that this isn't um you know, optimized, or I didn't go through, I didn't go through my examples trying to find an example where this happens. This is this is this is what happens. Okay, you just have to 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 learn to look for it. So, uh, and again, when you're looking for these extreme readings, if they occur early in a move, um, they're bullish. If they occur late in the move, it's probably a good time to this to to bail out. So uh, here, when it's right now on Datadog, I'd say it was a good time to be a seller in my opinion, um, because it's had a pretty good move up from 63 to 100 and, uh, you know, the 16 almost doubled uh, since April. So, yeah, I'm much more unlikely to be a, an exiter or a seller here than a buyer for sure. And uh, Kennedy wants to know, what charting platforms would you recommend? 
Um, you know, I think trading view is kind of becoming the de facto. Um, you can use the treat free trading view, I think. Um, uh, and it's, it's reasonable. The free trading view still has some use to it and it's free. Um, and I, th I, even the, the platinum version, I don't think it's crazy expensive. It's $600 a year or $700 a year or something like that. Um, I also really like trade navigator. Um, and if I'm programming something that I want to test, so if I'm trying to find out if A and B happens and then three days later C happens, you know, where's the market, uh, you know, in nine days later, then I'll use trade navigator for that sort of stuff. But for just drawing charts and keeping things organized with your different charts and ease of access to to drawing lines like we've just done here uh, today as we've, uh, you know, sort of let things unfold in real time. I think, uh, well, Trade Navigator is good for that too, uh, but Trading View is probably your least expensive and uh, it's a fairly smoothly functioning program. So I kind of like Trading View. And, and again, not to be sold short, but Trade Navigator I like as well. But uh, I think Trade Navigator, probably because of pricing, is becoming the, you know, the sort of de facto one that most people are now using. Right, and then the Lisa wants to know uh, if she can use her IRA to trade this. Um, I well, that's not within my ballywick really, but I I believe you certainly can. Yeah, John, you okay. probably know better more about that answer than me. Yeah, I guess you know. I I would say I used to be a broker, so uh, depends on what broker you're with, and if you have the right level of option approval on that uh, on that account. Uh, then you would be able to. Uh, um, okay, so let me pick up uh, one more here, and then we've got to move along here. Um, let's see. I'm sorry, I'm just scrolling through the questions here. Okay, uh, we can take Tasha one wants to, uh, Tasha wants to know if uh, someone is new to spread trading, uh, can they get some help from you? Um, sure. I mean, honestly, if you just, when this webinar is over, just go on YouTube and, and punch in spread trading and you, you can be there for weeks. Um, but certainly, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to, to answer them. But yeah, um, it's the life, it's the area we live in or the, the era we live in, right? If you, what do you want to know? Well, punch it into YouTube and you'll find out. You know, so if you just want the, the fundamentals of how spread trading works and what the advantages and disadvantages of are, um, there's probably going to be somebody on there who's going to explain it a lot more simply and uh, easily um, than I will. So uh, that would be my guess. But certainly if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to, uh, to email me or Skype me or whatever. And, and guys, I'll give you guys uh, a number and uh, email that you can use uh, for, for us here at FFR if you have uh, additional questions. But um, Joe, you've got a message that you put together for uh, the people that are here for this webinar. Uh, did you want to go ahead and speak to them? And then we'll uh, go through everything that comes with these programs and the offer that you've got for everybody today. Yeah, well, um, the offer will be up to you, I guess. But um... Yeah, as I said, guys, I think I'm pretty comfortable now um, that I had a little bit of, uh, you know, a few weeks just to sit back and say, okay, you know, you're treading water. What's going on? Let's, let's before things go askew, let's, let's go back and see what you did wrong and what you did right, what you should have done. And like I said, I wouldn't be put off by the pause, honestly. We've, I've started to be more active the last, uh, Two or three weeks, and that, and I've done, I've gone through the trades that we've done. You can see that they worked. Um, so I think now is a good time, um, personally, to be, you know, to be getting involved. And I, and uh, because I traded water for a little bit, um, uh, it's I know myself that that's a great thing because um, I had enough good sense to just be patient. Uh, sit back. Don't try to force it. Uh, the trade will come to you. You can't force the trade. Uh, so I'm happy with that. But I think that I've 
reestablished, I guess, in my mind that, okay, you, here's your methodology. Um, you may have got sidetracked a little bit trying to figure out or worry about CPI or the Fed meeting or whatever else is going on, but you don't need to be. Uh, that's all, just do the stuff that you've always done. A lot of it I showed you today, and that's how you find trades. And um, I talked myself out of a lot of good trades when I was st standing there flat because most of those trades were on the long side and um, the macro just scared the bejesus out of me. And um, and uh, in retrospect, you know, you, you can say I shouldn't have, but um, you're trying to be, you know, it, it's, it, I guess it, it, what I felt about it was that, hey, if, if the market goes down and I get caught with, you know, a basket full of calls here, I mean, look, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, so I did the cautious thing or the patient thing and just stood aside. But um, I think I've sorted through that whole mess now. And um, like I said, didn't really have any adverse effects from it. But um, yeah, I've been much more active the last uh, you know, two or three weeks and expect that to continue. And, uh, you know, I think the trades have looked pretty good. So um, now is a, a good time, in my view, uh, to be getting involved again um, uh, with the program. So, uh, and I wouldn't be put off by the flat. I think it's it's just like this is like that Occidental chart I showed you. It's, you know, it bides its time until it's ready to go again, and uh, I think I'm ready to go again. All right. Fantastic. So let's get into the learn and earn, what we call learn and earn aspects of the program, the educational material, the signal service for both target zone and key point options here. Um, this is everything that comes with the services, key point and target zone options. So you get the trade alerts, um, obviously to your email, uh, also to your cell phone. You also get the daily market and position recap. So you always know exactly where you stand, what trades are open, any new trades that have been open, any trades that have been closed for that day. You get a, a, an update each day with all that information. You get direct access to Joe, any educated questions you have regarding the, the markets, the methodology. And Joe, you put out a great uh, you know, uh, video uh, commentary every evening that's uh, quite valuable because you're going over trades that you're in, trades that you're stocking, you know, you kind of go over those setups. Yeah, so yeah most of the things I will. There are occasionally, I'll, if there's nothing to say, I won't, but yeah, mostly I, I put out a video just so kind of everybody knows what I'm thinking about. And that's a great, you know, piece of communication. Um, you get all the educational material that comes with the methodology, right? Describing how Joe enters, uh, his exit rules, you know, how he trades options on stocks and ETFs. You also get access to third-party registered brokers, right? This is an option for those that don't have the time to trade themselves, but they still want to benefit from these programs. Maybe you've got a business that you're running or you work during the day and you just can't be there to uh, physically execute the trades on your own. You can have uh, uh, third-party registered brokers who have been trained to execute these trades, been working with Joe for many years to execute these trades on the ba behalf of uh, 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 his subscribers. Uh, and then, of course, you get access to us here at FFR Trading, right? Our role is to help you build a well-diversified portfolio of strategies. And that may be with, you know, uh, different uh, traders, different strategies, different markets, right? To help, you know, mitigate uh, the risk and smooth out your equity curve. Now, the bonus here, Joe, I want you to talk a little bit about this bonus because this is a bit overlooked, I think, um, and that is access to your your uh, daily Skype group. Tell me, you know, tell the folks here what what goes on in that Skype group. Uh, well, it used to be a lot more active, just to be bluntly honest with you, because there's no sense of being in the other way. Uh, but we used to do a lot more intraday or very short term trading in it, and sometimes I'll still post them in our days, but it's not as easy to. Again, I think I told you guys, it's not as easy as it was um, four or five years ago, or three years ago even, um, to to be, like some days we would have 
I'd post these trades and we'd have four or five doubles in a week, just little wee trades that we're doing that, you know, an options that expire probably that Friday. Um, I still post some of those, but I, they're less now. So um, just because the market isn't, isn't as accommodating, I don't think of, as of some of those trades uh, as it was, uh, but certainly there's still discussion among people who are just like you, who are in the group and, um, what are you seeing? What am I seeing? What do you think, Joe? Um, and I'll say what I think. Um, and you can also get the uh, all the signals I post there. So if you can't trust your email uh, or anything like that, or you don't check it all the time, um, I post it in Skype, and you can you can get Skype to notify you when I post a trade. So if you're doing your own trades, it's a good way to uh, to know what I've what what I'm doing if I'm posting a trade. Um, but yeah, and, and it's also a really easy access for me. If, so if you have a question, uh, it's a great place to ask it. Uh, once in a while, I'll miss an email, uh, you know, because you get a lot and sometimes you just miss it. But on a Skype, you know, it'll be highlighted on your Skype, so you're you're going to see it. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a it's a if you're if you want to learn or you're trading actively or intraday, uh, it's a great uh, it's a great addition. Um, you know, there are trades I'll post there uh, that I might not post uh, on key point or target zone because they might expire the next day. So I'm going, guys, okay, here's a flyer I'm going to take here, guys. Um, or they might expire in, you know, two or three days, you know, if it's a Wednesday or, or something. Um, so yeah, I'll post some very short term trades like that. And it's also a good place to ask me questions. And it's also a great way to know what the signals are if you um, uh, if you prefer Skype to email or text. All right, fantastic. So let's get into um, just some thoughts here, guys, some questions to ask yourself before we uh, uh, show you what Joe's got for you here. You know, you're here for a reason, right? Obviously, everybody's looking for something uh, because Maybe everything's not going quite according to plan as far as your financial life goes, right? Maybe you're a, you're a new trader, maybe you're struggling, right? You're not profitable. We know the majority of uh, new traders fail. Um, you need help. You know, ask yourself, would this help? You know, would partnering with Joe, having access to Joe, you know, coming into that Skype group, um, getting those trades and the additional trades that he's looking at, uh, would that help? Would that help you reach your your financial goals. Um, maybe you've got years of experience, but you've never achieved the kind of numbers that you know Joe has uh, shown you here today. Um, would partnering with a professional like Joe Duffy help? Would it help to see how he has successfully been helping others like yourself reach their goals faster? You know, maybe you're trying to build a retirement for yourself. Uh, I know a lot of uh, a lot of people, you know, uh, talk to us and they've got maybe 10 to 15 years before they want to retire. Uh, and they've realized that, you know, 8% in a mutual fund uh, each year is is not going to cut it at that point. You know, they have to get on some kind of fast track. You know, would getting a return of over 50% or 100%, you know, would that help you? Uh, those that don't have the time, right? Maybe, again, you work full time or you're busy running your own business. Would it help to have... Joe's trade signal sent directly to a third party registered broker who would execute the trades in your account for you. You know, would that help? Uh, so as you think about that, let's just go over here, the special offer that uh, Joe has for you. Well, before I get to that, here's a testimonial. Now, this is one of my clients, uh, Gregory, a uh, great client of ours here at FFR. Uh, obviously he is a student with Joe Duffy's programs here. Uh, specifically the target zone option program and uh, you know he just starts this off by saying you know he's never made a testimonial for anybody before uh, until he got into target zone and I uh, just wanted to share the success of this program and how it's changed his life um, he talked about his he's an executive of a successful family-run business and uh, you know he was looking for some form of uh, to build some form of wealth through some passive income sources. And he found uh, Joe Duffy, uh, you know, through through us, uh, through actually through a prestigious, well-known philanthropic, uh, philanthropic organization that he belongs to. 
and he contacted, uh, contacted us here at FFR and uh, we set him up with uh, Joe's Target Zone Option Program. And he said one of the great things was uh, back on the 7th of February, this was back in, uh, it was 20, 2020, this was the COVID crash. Uh, Joe, uh, you know, warned uh, his um, subscribers to an impending economic collapse and a severe contraction in the U.S. equities. He said, I was a bit scared, nervous, and frightened. This message was very sobering, but I acted. In other words, he acted on Joe's signals that Joe sent out. He did the uh, stark warning and aligned his portfolio with Joe Duffy's target zone strategy. He said, I'm pleased to report that not only did my family avoid financial turmoil, but they literally made more money in just two days of the collapse than he'd ever made in his life. All right, so that's just a testament to, um, you know, you're dealing with somebody like Joe Duffy who's got 30 years of experience in this. He's seen it all, uh, or just about all of it. Uh, you know, the, things always pop up, the, those black swans and stuff. But when you have somebody like that by your side helping you guide and navigate these markets, uh, you know, not only can it save your portfolio, but it can help make your portfolio in a big way. So this is what Joe uh, has for you guys today. For the eight uh, new subscribers that qualify, right? We do need to speak to you because we have to make sure this is a good fit for you, right? This is not for everybody. Joe is willing to offer a 50% discount off his standard license fees for his tar target zone option program, right? Not only is he gonna reduce the price by 50%, he's going to give you that key point program that we look through for free. All right, so if you sign up, if you're one of the first eight that subscribe to Target Zone at a 50% discount off that program, he's going to throw in his Key Point Option program. All right, you're also getting the Skype, right, the Skype room. Uh, that will also be in there with you so you can check in with Joe on a daily basis, see what trades are out there, any new trades that he's, uh, he's looking at. All right, Joe's looking for, he said, great clients to follow his program. If you have success, he wants to hear about it, right? He wants you to give him a testimonial, right? We want to, you know, uh, build this program because it's a great program and there's not a lot of programs out there where people are, you've got traders trading spreads um, and it's a great way to learn. So uh, if you're one of the first eight new subscribers, give us a call. We do need to speak to you. So let me put up the, uh, the numbers here. Uh, you can use the 800. 8830524 number. All right. If you're outside uh, the US, you can use the 737-292-4425 number. And uh, the email is support at ffrtrading.com. All right, Joe, any last thought uh, thoughts that you have for those that may be on the fence here or thinking about it or have any other questions? What would you yeah. say to Yeah, no, Michael just uh, texted me here. Um explain what RSI is. Uh, so I'll just tackle that real brief and then I'll then we'll, we'll wrap it up with what you wanted to talk about. Uh, RSI is just a, a basically an oscillator indicator that's available publicly on virtually any um, software that you have. It stands for Relative Strength Index. It was developed by Wells Wilder, uh, I believe in the late 70s. He wrote a book called Technical Concepts in Trading. Um, excellent, excellent book. and. Um, um, yeah, so it's basically a measure of overbought and oversold, and it's called the Relative Strength Index, and that's what RSI is. What's what it stands for? So, but it's uh, again, if you want to know more about RSI, Google Relative Strength Index on YouTube, and you can be there for a week. Okay. In terms of John, do you just want to help me wrap up here in terms of what you want me to to address? Yeah, let me just say, you know, if you're uh, an existing student of Joe's. Uh, you currently have one of his programs, call in and let's see how you're doing. Uh, look for ways to increase the performance that you're getting and get you back on track. If you need to get back on track, you know, we're here to help you. Uh, I know this, guys, if you don't take any action, nothing changes, right? Nothing in your financial world is going to change unless you take that first step. Right? It could be the thing that changes your financial life for the better, but you won't know unless you give us a call. Let's see if this is a good fit for you. 
if you're one of the first eight that calls, not only are you going to get a 50% discount off of the Target Zone Spread Option Program, but you're also going to get the Key Point uh, Options Program that was up over 1,000% uh, over that period going back to January of 2017, uh, you're going to get that for free, uh, and as well as access to the Skype group. All right. All right, guys. So if you have questions, just give us a call. If you want to take advantage of the offer, it's the 800-883-0524 number. Again, outside the U.S., the 737-292-4425 number. And you can email us there at support at FFRtrading.com, and we'll have one of our um, our strategists uh, get back to you as soon as possible. All right, so give us a call, guys. We thank you for coming uh, and participating. We look forward to speaking with you. We want you to have a great rest of your trading week. And keep in mind, Joe, you got a Fed meeting next week. So make sure you're prepared. And guys, stay safe out there. Take care. Have a great rest of your trading week. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for coming. And thanks, John, for hosting.